We're at the Sigma booth at Cinegear 2023. We're talking Foveon updates, FP updates, and updates for the Cine line. Hello everyone, Graham Ehlers Sheldon here from CineD.com. Welcome to CineGear 2023. We're back at the Paramount lot, and I'm here joined by Yamaki-san from Sigma Japan to talk about all things uh, Sigma, honestly. So I think a good place to start maybe is with the brand new 65 millimeter Cine Prime. You know, it's been out for a little now, but it's a it feels a great gap between the 50 and the 85. So talking about the 65 and then onwards, um, are you going to continue to support the Cine users out there? Yes, of, of course. Actually, uh, we have got so many requests from the, the users to use uh, the uh, to develop the some lenses uh, uh, gap between the 50 to 85. So I'm very happy that uh, our users are very happy with the 65. And uh, Cine lens, uh, Cine business is so important for us. It's our passion. So uh, moving forward, we will continuously release the new products. Great. Well, look, at this point, it might be good for me to fully disclose off the bat that I am a Cine ambassador for Sigma, so please take that into account. But So you mentioned your continued interest in supporting the Cine part of the business, and thank you. Let's talk uh, Sigma FP for a moment. You just had a new firmware update. Um, what, what sort of features can users expect in this new update? I mean, they're moving forward? Um, or this current update, 3.0, I understand things like L-Zone, things like that, and then I guess, yeah, moving forward as well. Yes. Um, so far, we have already implemented the, the, our customer requested to us, but we are now doing the market research, uh, what, what the customers are do, do, uh, wanting for the new future. And, what, you know, the Sigma FP for me, because of its size, the 12-bit the Cine DNG RAW is, is such a huge part of my personal workflow. And then, of course, the director's viewfinder mode is something that I hope you're hearing, too, is very popular for me on set here uh, in Hollywood. And then the Sigma FP also, we're talking a lot, especially in North America, about the camera to cloud partnership with Atomos. So what's your perspective on the FP as a camera to cloud device? Actually, uh, this is a very important feature, I guess, and uh, many customers uh, will be using that feature in the, in the future too. So we are very happy to work with Atomos for this solution. Yeah, and I, I, to me, in a way, it feels very future-proof. It feels like this is what the next six, eight, ten years, you pick whatever duration, is where the camera industry specifically is headed. Now look, I have to ask this question because the internet will let me know if I don't. Foveon sensor, any any updates? Actually, we are still working on the technical development, let's say. Uh, we need several issues, several technical uh, issues that we need to solve. But uh, we are still working on it, and uh, we will never forget, uh, uh, give up. You will never get, thank you, yes, sometimes the user just wants to hear that you're never going to give up, that you're continuing the development, so would you say still full speed ahead? I mean, the team is still actively working on it, all, all you know, all speed ahead, so to speak. Of course, uh, we already assigned uh, several engineers to develop the new uh, Fabian OS X3 sensors, and uh, they are fully motivated to provide the, the, the new X3 sensors for the, our customers. And any sort of time frame, ballpark? Actually, uh, it's hard to say uh, because uh, we, every time we make uh, the prototype sensor, we find uh, several minor problems. Uh, until uh, we can be 100% satisfied with the result, uh, we can't guarantee the release time. I look. I fully understand that. I had to ask. How about the 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 form factor of the FP in general? I mean, very popular with a lot of folks. Incredibly modular. Could you see some sort of Foveon integration in sort of an FP body, something like that, or potentially? Uh, I really hope so. Actually, I really like the the form factor of the FP. I normally use FP. Actually, I use not FP every day. I put the FP in the back, in my bag. But uh, when it comes to Fovion sensor, uh, we need a very powerful processor, or very, and it makes uh, the backend system a little bit big. So it might be challenging to put the Fovion sensor and the old backend system into such a small body. But uh, 
Uh, but you're committed to that minimalist philosophy in general. Of course, of course. That's our uh, direction. Great. Um, let's talk a little bit about the future of, say, the contemporary line in general. I know at Sigma it's sort of broken up kind of photo side, uh, cine side, but I have used the contemporary and still the art line all the time in cine. How is, uh, say, the development of the X mount? Are you still committed to the L mount alliance, for example? Stuff like that. Yes, uh, we will continuously uh, release uh, lenses for the additional mount. And we also continuously expand the, the, the lens series for our wide variety of uh, users. Um, so specifically mirrorless, that work continues, X-Mount, still a committed partner in the L-Mount Alliance? Of course, L-Mount is very important. Uh, the the L-Mount system now has uh, Leica camera uh, lenses and the Panasonic camera lenses and Sigma and the DJI joined the, the, uh, the L-Mount. So, from the user's perspective, the Edelmount has a very uh, unique and a very attractive uh, camera systems, I think. Yeah, and so if you miss that bit of news, DJI, especially in the case of their Ronin 4D camera platform, just added an L-mount uh, adapter module. It's not fully an adapter, it almost fits directly onto the sensor body uh, itself. And so, on a personal note, how does it feel to be here at Cine Gear, outside again, on the Paramount lot, seeing all of this activity? It's very exciting. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, four years uh, ago, we are here. And uh, very nice to see all the people in the industry, and I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, it, fe it feels right. I, I think that's one of the best parts about Cine Gear as a show. It feels like a direct connect with, you know, Hollywood, so to speak. Correct. And also, uh, it's very important to see the, the actual uh, users, I mean, cinematographers, and to get the direct feedback. And uh, that's, they give a lot of information for us for the future product development. Well, if you had to say, what's been some of the feedback you've been hearing about the Cine line in general? I know the 65, very, very new focal length to some extent, but what are some users what are so, saying? What are you thinking about with the Cine line going forward? I have to ask because it's Cine gear. More focal lengths, more, I don't know. Zooms? Um, I can't share the, our, uh, the, 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 the roadmap, yeah. the roadmap. <laughs> but uh, uh, again, as I said, the Cine is very important for us. So we will continuously release a new product so that uh, we can satisfy the customers. Well, look, I can say this because, you know, I'm not bound to some sort of secrecy agreement, but I would love to see some full frame coverage zooms. I wouldn't mind that. Um, some sort of mo modular user interchangeable mounts at the back, perhaps. But anyway, just some ideas for me. Take it or leave it. You don't have to. Thank you very much. I will take note and uh, share it with our engineers once I go back to Japan. Well, thank you so much. So please enjoy the rest of your time here in Los Angeles. Enjoy the rest of the show. And thank you so much for speaking to CineD. Thank you very much for having me. All right, guys, that's it for us here at CineD.com from the Sigma booth at CineGear 2023. Stay tuned for more ongoing coverage from the show. Thanks, everybody.